The full-scale invasion of Russia into Ukraine revealed who the true Ukrainians are, who are merely citizens with Ukrainian passports, and who are traitors. If you thought that the situation in esports significantly differs from traditional sports or show business, you are greatly mistaken. To prove this, we have decided to assemble the Ukrainian esports national team of traders. This roster will include both young talents who haven't fully developed as individuals yet, as well as industry veterans and even world champions. Get ready, because we're starting right now. Elementrix the first member of our national team of traders is a young talent, Elementrix, an 18-year-old mobile PUBG player. He is known in real life as Danilo Zadar. Recently, Elementrix, a Ukrainian by passport, decided that it would be a great move to become a new player for VP in PUBG Mobile. The fact that the club was once owned by Alisher Usmanov through intermediaries and is now under the control of other individuals due to sanctions, this time Armenian bros who have fully completed VP's top management didn't bother Danilo, as mobile gamers have have the lowest IQ among gamers. To justify his actions, this genius promised to donate all his prize money to the armed forces of Ukraine. The earnings he made from tournaments while representing the most rashest esports club on the planet. It's no wonder that the Ukrainian Esports Federation banned Elementrix from representing Ukraine in national championships. Danilo commented on this matter as follows. Well, that's it. I'm no longer in the national team, obviously, and it's a shame. I hope the guys will achieve a worthy result even even without me. I don't want to hear anything about betrayal. Those who know me in real life understand my position on everything. Mira and Yatoro the Iron Core players of our team of traders are the champions of TI-10, Miroslav Mira Kolpakov and Ilya Yatoro Maliarchuk from Team Spirit. The last time I heard about the war from them were in videos where the guys were wandering through a Serbian winery, sipping local wine, and talking about their lives after February 24th. There was also an attempt from Mira to get into the Ukrainian community when he gave an interview in Ukrainian to Olsior during the international in Singapore, but it wasn't very successful. Uh, yeah, майже в такому самому об'ємі, як я допомагав на початку війни. просто, ну, я не бачу сенсу особливо про це постійно говорити, або ще щось там когось повідомлювати. Their stories about the war focused more on themselves and their experiences than on what the Russian forces did in Buka, where Yatoro is from. He even posted videos of his ransacked apartment by Russian militaries, but even that didn't push him towards more decisive actions. Mira faced a full-scale invasion in his hometown of Lutsk, so he, like other refugees, had to leave Ukraine. Whether he did it legally or not, that is the question. And after that, silence in the public. Only justifications for the poor decisions of Team Spirit's management, who in initially claimed to sever ties with Russia and asked to refer to them as a Serbian organization at the start of the conflict. However, for some reason they signed deals with purely Russian sponsors, such as Yandex Food and Russian Uber Eats. They even asked Mira to explain to their Ukrainian fans that it's normal. Uh, у нас был такой спонсор, мне еще вот объяснили, я сам погуглил, сам поресерчил и подумал, что в этом не будет ничего такого, что люди там сами тоже поищут про это в бот-инфу и сами для себя типа решат, но как вот оказалось, типа репутация у Яндекса была ужасная, я сам не знал там многих моментов и ну, я могу понять тех людей, кто хейтил, но вот когда я об этом думал впервые, и я не, не, э, я не видел в этом ничего такого, так как эта компания, вот, которая живет, ну, точнее, не, не живет, а э, э, работает в Европе. It's worth noting that after the backlash, Yandex Ida never appeared on the team's jerseys. Yatoro also didn't escape embarrassment. At the end of 2022, when Valve banned 10 players for account sharing, the carry of Team Spirit found nothing better than defending his friend and former Virtus Pro player, Kama. They even launched a hashtag, hashtag free Kama. When in early July 2023, Team Spirit signed Kama as a promising young streamer, things got even funnier. Kama denied Yataro's assistance in getting a contract with Team Spirit. However, when the CEO of the club stood up for the lifetime banned player, the truth became even clearer. It's not surprising that like other players from Team Spirit, Mira and Yotaro ended up on the UESF's ban list. They earned it. Pole Bandana 
Another young talent, this time a CSGO player and not a patriot, Zakar Polbandana Sildachuk. <laughs> This guy has had quite a few embarrassments in his 18 years. Playing with Russians in the Strangers mix in ESEA's regular season after February 24, 2023, and participation in a Russian show match where he played with a fan of Putin and streamer Fander. Nevertheless, Ikla signed the 18-year-old from Lviv to their Ukrainian roster, releasing a statement with apologies. This didn't help lift the ban from UESF, after which the CEO of Ikla and the manager of UESF engaged in a bit of trash talk on social media. DK Phobos Our team needs an experienced captain, and the best candidate to fill this spot is Oleksandr DK Phobos Kusheria, an old Eastern European Dota player who spent most of his career playing for VP. Back in April 2022, when the Russians were kicked out of the Kiev region, he posted a video of his acquaintance, whose apartment was raided by Russian militaries. He referred to the Russians as complete animals. After the conflict began, he worked as an analyst at Maincast and participated in charity show matches. However, in February of 2023, every Everything changed irreversibly. It's hard to say why DK Phobos did what he did, whether he lacked money or he was always a hidden supporter of the Rashism. But the fact remains that on February 6th, DK Phobos joined the Russian speaking studio Paragon. Alexander, Although registered as a German company, all of its employees come from Ruhub or Epic Esports events, and the studio itself is located in Kazakhstan. The Ukrainian Dota community was shocked by DK Phobos. It's hard to express our feelings, but Vilat did it best. Resolution and where would this team be without a substitute player? The number one candidate for this position is Roman Fominok, also known as Resolution. While his hometown of Nikopol was being ravaged, he was chilling in Bali and expressed a desire to become a blogger, sharing insights into pro gamers' backstage lives. If someone had told us a year ago that Resolution would be playing for a team associated with a Russian bookmaker and defending Russians, we would have thought it a tasteless joke. But unfortunately, it's true. A year ago, when supporting Ukraine was trendy, Resolution was drawing Ukrainian flags on his cheek and encouraging support for Ukraine in interviews. One more thing, uh, this flag, support, support for my country, please. Uh, everybody who can do something, just please do it. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my, my country proud as well with a performance. However, in 2023, Raman showed his true colors. When BB team qualified for the Berlin Major, pure, a fan of drawing Z on the minimap couldn't obtain a visa to Germany. It seemed that BB would miss the tournament, but the savior for the Russians was expatriate Resolution. During the major, the team won only one match against TSM, and a loss to the underdog's execration that knocked them out. It seemed like nothing could be more embarrassing than playing for a team associated with a Russian bookmaker. Hold his beer, because Resolution will prove that this is just the beginning. First, during a stream when he was asked about Nikopol and his play for the Russian bookmaker's team, he responded this way. Then, during the Bali Major, where he worked as an English language analyst, Resolution once again came to the rescue of his brothers from Russia. Pure demonstrated that being good at Dota and being smart isn't the same. During a long pause in the second map against Tundra, he decided to alt-tab and watch Nyx's stream, which was against the rules. According to the rulebook, the team should have been disqualified from the tournament, and Pure should have received a Valve ban for participating in tournaments for a certain period. However, besides the incompetent players, there were also unqualified referees at the tournament, who allowed BB team to play with a substitute in the lower bracket due to rule violations. He confirmed that 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 is obviously not according to the rules, and as a result, Pure is disqualified from not just the series, but for the rest of the event. And as a result, Resolution has been chosen by Bedboom team to be the stand-in for the remainder of the event. Resolution greatly assisted BB in exiting the tournament, but didn't prevent them from making it to the international via DPC points. And before we continue, we'd like to remind you that you can support our channel financially. You can do this via Patreon or PayPal. All the details can be found in the description below this video. Starix. 
What esports team would be complete without a coach? The best fit for this role is undoubtedly Sergei Starix Ischuk, a native of Kharkiv and a player from the legendary Navi CS 1.6 lineup. When the Russians were bombing his hometown Kharkiv, he casually started streaming Elden Ring, emphasizing that games are beyond politics. Starix didn't publicly condemn the invasion. In fact, he continued working with Russian teams. First, he was kicked from AV in May 2023 due to funding issues, and then from Aurora, where he twice failed the preparation of the team for RMR events, first for IEM Rio and then for Blast Paris. Currently, Starix holds the position of sports director at Melbet, which he represented back in 2019. For the bookmaker, he has already assembled a CSGO roster that includes three Ukrainians and two Russians. Interestingly, Starix stated that this roster was not for a Russian organization, but the fact is that Melbet is a partner of the Russian club Baltica and the bookmaker that is officially registered and operates in Russia. This points to either misinformation from the former Navi player or his lack of foresight. That's all for today. Who did we forget? Which members of this trader team surprised you the most? Write about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. It helps us grow. Good game.